Greetings, I am Nice. And I am Scandal. And let's, let's play, play a game, game together. together. Let's yes. feed some raccoons together. Some, like, raccoons. sexually dimorphic raccoons, according am, to the illustration. Right, in some particular fashion. Though dimorphism is more about size, friend, more than about, like, features, as far as I know. Nope, because sexually dimorphic differences in uh, birds and butterflies can be colors and wing patterns, don't you know? I uh, are you sure? Yes. Sexual dimorphism is just differences in the body due to sex. Like, or your genetic gender characteristics. Oh, okay. So, distinct difference in size or appearance between the mm -hmm. sexes of an animal in addition to difference between the sexual organs themselves. Yep. So, I actually didn't know that. I just knew about the size thing. Yeah. So, like, a lot of butterflies that are exactly the same size have different wing patterns for males and females, so they're sexually dimorphic. dimorphic. And in the way that elephant seals, there's a really big male and a really soft female, the male also has the large bulbous nose, and the female does not, yes. which is a sexually dimorphic characteristic. Right. Okay? Yes, absolutely. So, if you didn't know what sexual dimorphism was, now you do. And it's not based on a binary system either. It's just differences of various sexes in whatever species there is. Yes. So, even if you're going way down to, like, microscopic, and then you have, these are a bunch of, you know, little paramecium's of the same species, but they're all different genders, they'll have dimorphic characteristics, like different numbers of cilia or different cell expressions, things like that, sometimes. Yes. Not all species are sexually dimorphic. Yep, not at all. Like, All right. I think I think crows and ravens have very little sexual dimorphism, like the corvid family. Yeah, I don't think they really do either. Yeah. I think it might depend, though, on which one they are. So we're going to feed the raccoons in their feed weirdly... the raccoons. ...sexually dimorphic. Tuppence! Sub I don't have tuppence. I'm poor. You are. Shit, I can't buy anything. We have Isn't nothing. Isn't money one of the main plots of this game? How am I feeding these damn guys? How am I feeding myself? <gasps> Air, your patron. Your patron feeds you because you have that entire garden, so that's how you feed yourself. And I just don't eat anything but that garden unless, you know, Luke or somebody brings over food. Yep, pretty much. All that's right, all cool. you got. All right. all right. Here you go, little buddies. I thought she said little brothers for a second. I was going to be like, whoa. Right? Oh, and they're they're, they're going to do the Scooby. Scooby paw thing. Okay. I was going to say, if the other one doesn't eat, I'm going to be like, what Munch are you wedge. doing? If you feed those cats, you'll never get rid of them. They probably live here anyway, and you didn't listen to me at all. They're not... Cats. I love his sort of preachy, pointy finger experience. Blah, la la, cats. cats. Blah, la la, feed them. Blah, la uh. la, stuck forever. Ada, you will never be rid of them. Goodbye, Just you'll shaking die. shaking his finger eternally. Do, 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 lecturing Lily. Uh-huh. The yes. raccoons in the meantime, I don't care. They're not... Never mind. Okay, so I have to say something before it gets a little bit too late. Do it. Um, Please, for the love of God... If they're going to redeem Blaine, let them redeem Blaine over there. So we've been having some concerns because he keeps popping up in, like, ads in between where we're playing, you know, through some of the various levels. And it's been and, really frustrating, actually. And by over there, we mean, like, off-screen outside of the game. Yes. <laughs> like, it's frustrating to uh, sort of contemplate that they might actually be going, no, but he's just kind of harmless and sort of stupid and whatever else. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I understand that that might be a thing, but I, I, I don't agree with a direct direction of, here, let's isolate these two people who really did have a terrible time and they broke up and had a horrific five years that they seemed to have been involved, and they were both really not good for each other, but, you know, we're gonna have one of them try to fix the other one, and that'll be cute, and that'll be relatable, right? Except for, according to Blaine, she was good for him, he just wasn't good for her, and I will tell you that I have been in a couple of relationships where the primary reason, that once, once all the reasons that I had to come up with of why I don't want to go back, I don't want to be in this relationship, had all been exhausted against, and I say at, basically, the guy who I was telling I didn't want to be in a relationship with, there was down to the last straw of, but I'm such a better person with you. And I appreciate that altruistically or philanthropically, I could just sacrifice my life to that altar of I make you a better person. But if it contributes nothing to me and drains much from me, I don't see why I should do that. Yes. Especially now, since that was also much younger for you, too, where you're like, I don't know how to get away from people that are, yeah, doing or performing that sort of behavior. Even when I have gotten away from a relationship, but they're still trying, and I've, I've successfully cut it off, but they're still trying to reintroduce it anyway. There does get to be the, my friends have told me I'm a better person with you. I know I'm a better person with you. And I'm like, that doesn't give me anything from this relationship. And right now I want to say that I'm in, I'm in an unhealthy enough place that I feel like that sounds selfish to say that I need to get something from this relationship. Oh, and I'm going, no, but people should do. be able yeah. to get things out of their relationship. Mm -hmm. It should also contribute to them. And I've heard from 
from other women going, yes, but what you get out of it is being so good for them and the satisfaction of building them up, caring for them, fixing them, training them, and just, just parenting them, basically, or caretaking for them. And I'm like, I don't need to get personal satisfaction of my life out of caretaking for another person successfully enough that they do better in their life only while I'm there. No kidding. That I can't equip them with any skills and abilities and support that they can use when they're not with me, but if they're with me, they're such a better person. <sighs> I'm like, it's almost like you make more, you do more when you're on a team than by yourself. Uh, that just seems basic logic. If the team yeah. is working, you just you, you do more on a team than by yourself. Yeah, no kidding. And if it doesn't, then you don't be on a team. Guess what? Ha ha. I just say, and even if, like, it's not a very good team, if one person is doing shit and the other person is supportive of that shit, it's not a very good team, but it does get more done than one person. Yes. So, eh, anyway, I think they're a couple. Because I totally want to bring a relationship conversation into this conversation where I don't want to discuss my relationship with you at all you know what aren't they cute stupid cats bye Hi. look Please at leave. what else can we fix up around here jeez uh, have you seen any kittens around uh they really are just like he's the biggest fucking moron and cannot listen and will not listen and refuses to listen even when it's directly like aimed at him i think they're I doing yeah the, the refuses to listen and what they're really trying to drive in here is not that he's stupid so much as that he's genuinely not listening to what luke says i'm yes. not sure that's it but i feel like that's it that he just isn't paying attention to her and has having his own experience with himself in the same way that basically they're demonstrating again that they never connected well. He never was sympathetic to slash interested in slash related to all the things she cared about. So yes. it's like her caring about her saying that things are cute. Her caring about her saying that she likes art or music or other has other passions. And him going, I don't really connect to or care about any of those things. And that even while they're doing stuff together, that she's describing why it has value to her, he will not connect to it. Going, so the important piece to you might be Brock's? Potentially? <sighs> but I'm still afraid. I'm very uncomfortable with the situation. Again, I, I am she afraid. does not need to help redeem him no. at all. And the fact that they keep playing this game like it's sort of a lighthearted, friendly comedy bothers me with, again, sort of the what I consider to be dark, serious subject matter. Sort of uh, having an abusive ex push his way past your boundaries and back into your life. And also That eventually... sounds like a very serious book, honestly. If you're yeah. like, yeah, so a young woman leaves her fiancé suddenly, essentially, in the dark of the night... Um, to, you know, go and uh, try and rediscover herself and make a new version and, 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 you know, rebuild herself at, you know, a property that she inherited and uh, from her, you know, her great aunt that died. Mm -hmm. She finds out the property is a destroyed ordeal to get through with a bunch of kavits. She invests a huge amount of emotional and physical labor into trying to repair it and reinvent herself away from him. And then he comes back into her life and pushes his way in despite multiple asserted boundaries and displays the same kind of controlling, dismissive, and painful, you know, harmful behavior that he did before, which causes her pain. And they're like, isn't that charming and funny? What a cute story for the masses. Mm. Sounds a little dark to me. Yeah, kind of. Kittens, then. you're unreal. Oh, I didn't realize how late it already was. Huh. That okay. actually just like, a, oh, wait, I didn't realize that. I'll head back to the studio. Oh, or you could just... Oh. Leave! Oh, oh, oh I'm what, afraid. What got, no, nope, keep going. Just keep going. I'm terrified of what's gonna happen. She's gonna go, wait! Lane, yep. um, you could sleep in- she could just say you can sleep in the house if you want. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my god. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh my god. And he's stunned. <gasps> Did really? my ploy work? Why would she do this, though? I don't fucking- Like- why is she letting him into her space even more instead of going, I'm still trying to get rid of you? I'm so uncomfortable. So I know that they're doing something weird that I don't necessarily relate to, and there's this experience of her going, I he is slowly pushing his way back in via like, you know, pushing my buttons and undermining me and convincing and you know, and also using nostalgia against me for what we did have in common, what I was familiar with with him. And I'm spending time alone around him, which of course makes me feel more connected to him because it's very familiar. And I'm isolated anyway. <sighs> You can, you can sleep on the couch in the main house if you want. That doesn't make sense. I don't like, like it. Why not? Like even just this morning, we were trying to shove him back into the studio, and we felt embarrassed about spending more time with him, and we were profoundly ashamed of our own choices in reference to um, what's our friend's name? Regina. Regina. In reference to Regina, 
Were we only embarrassed because of what we thought Regina would think or because of our own opinion of our actions? I. Uh, it sounds more like it was about Regina more than us, which is weird to say. Like, we're more concerned about our new life and how people would interact with our old... Like, I don't get it. The priorities are weird and all over the place, and I am still paranoid that what's going to happen is that they won't actually get back together, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but what's going to happen is that he will get together with Rachel, and yeah. I will be furious because you're basically going to be shoving Rachel back into a... A basically similar heterosexual relationship, as far as I can tell, because we still don't know much about Luke. We barely know anything about any of the characters, but he seems like almost like a worse, like slightly nastier version than Luke, which of is going... saying something. Which yeah. isn't not, which isn't the problem isn't here. I don't think based no. on my friend's language that it's a heterosexual relationship into yeah. a weird heterosexual. No, just into another relationship with an adult baby man, if you will, uh -huh. that she will then have to caretake for, raise, and help his organizational skills. His huh. chaos will contribute to my order and him going, Lily, you just made me so organized. You helped me do stuff. So re then Rachel can do it better, better or again or... or the same. Yay. And it will be crap for Rachel, except it will be better because Rachel's more assertive than Lily. I, except I for the fact that like Rachel it. would, I, in my opinion, should never end up in a situation where she deals with somebody like this. This is awful. Thank you. You're welcome. What were you sleeping on in the studio anyway? Oh my god, I can't do this. <sighs> Start a Can whole new day. day and cry I'm... a lot. Oh, this is making me so uncomfortable. And again, like, I'm kind of with my friend here of going, like, it seems like they're trying to play something cute and for fun. And I'm like, I personally cannot take this. This is, seems makes, terrible yeah. and this is being dragged out so <laughs> hard and so far that I just... I love everything loading in piece uh, by piece. Yes. That is, that, I will just appreciate that while this is uncomfortable. Uh -huh. I'm going to have a shower. Since when do we take showers and or tell our like our bedtime routine to anyone? Right. And head to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Did you bring your toothbrush from the studio? Do you, have, you have a, a toothbrush? toothbrush? Please don't use my toothbrush. Ew. Okay. Good night, Lily Bear. Please don't call Please me that. Smile. Oh my god, she didn't say anything. She didn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh. 3.04 a.m. If we find him... Okay. Oh god, they did bring him back. Oh, is this what's gonna happen? Why is it actually they... gonna be terrible? Blame! Okay. Hey! Hang on! Hang on! Did Larry, after stealing Blaine's car, convince Blaine to run this basically, um... Oh god, like, it's, it's not a shenanigan, it's a oh, con. Run uh, this con. con. Yeah. To, like, run this con. Are they working together? And he basically went, Blaine, I understand that you're fairly easily influenced. Let, let, me, let me wave money in front of you. Hey! Hey, Blaine! On the way about, that's amazing. What are you doing? Yep! Yep! I am vindicated, thank God! Yeah. What are so you doing here, you idiot? Oh, I want in, I. I'm just checking up on things. Uh, um, he's still drunk. Yeah, and also, guess what? Here we go. Miss Rich was asking about progress. So whoever <laughs> his investor is, he brought Blaine in on it and went, if we can romance <coughs> the house out this is romancing the stone yeah if we can romance the house out from under her then uh we can split this you you just need to convince her to marry you and inherit and then you know we can we can just shaft her and sell the whole thing and then you can convince her it was a good plan the whole time and that she yep. deserves a city life deserves the kind of city life you want yes wreck these people i dislike this so strongly things are Progressing fine. I think she'll get it all done. Now get out of here. You're going to wake her up with all your yelling. Oh, yeah, totally. Just promise me I'll give him a share. Uh, take it up with Mr. Rich. He's handling the money, not me. I. Uh, this is weird as hell. Do we get to meet Mr. Super Rich at some point? Fine. Just keep in touch. Because I totally love working with people who are weird, drunken assholes that also stole, steal my car and are con artists, which we know Blaine has no problem being a con artist and working underhanded. This is super weird. This is a lot. Go! Go on! Finally, though, at least they're Go. going, they're, they are again confirming the con. That's yes. nice. Finally, they can take a little bit of the pressure off of us being afeared that they're just going to give him an a, a, like a really clear redemption arc and go, holy shit, no. Y yeah, no, this is terrible. Uh. Alrighty. Uh, I'd think he didn't notice me up here with the lights on, stargazing, early in the morning, mooning over Luke and my problems with him that don't involve or concern him and only me. 
Da-da-da-t. I mean, uh... Thank... All right. God. Well, thank goodness for that. Well, uh, we didn't get back here quite fast enough for it to, uh, load in that... For, um, to see the, the, the next day screen, or day number 21 now, is it? I think it is 21, Anyway, so. uh, but that was definitely there, and then other than that, we didn't miss anything. <clears throat> but Blaine is having an experience with himself. Yeah, pretty much. Good morning, bees! So we could just sit there and record him doing that and being like, this is how everyone feels stuck indoors in quarantine. <laughs> oh my god, hang on, hang on. Okay. My name is Michael with the B, and oh I'm god. afraid of insects. Wait. Hang on, hang on, wait a minute. What? Where's the B? Oh my what? god, a bee! A, the B? Oh, it's a, my name's Michael with a B, the B is silent, and I have a terrible fear of insects. Where's the B? Oh my god! That's the one. Yes, that's the one. I love that one. Yeah, that's There's a, a bee. Good vine. Very so good vine. Good morning, flowers. Okay, okay. So here's what we've this got is here. This so performative. So I was going to say, one, this is very performative. But two, you guys, I'm hoping that, that all the viewers here are, are aware that Superman exists. And that Superman's, basically it has been broken down that Superman's, like, critique on what humanity finds valuable but dismissible is Clark Kent. So Clark Kent is his made up persona yeah. of here's what a good working class but forgettable person is like. Yes. And he's really successful in it. So that's his his um, interpretation on method acting of what a normal ass dude is like, right? Yes. Um, but that is still, you know, employable and has white privilege. Yes. <laughs> Shockingly. And um, so Blaine is, so that's his, uh, that's a Superman's critique because he isn't Clark Kent, he is Superman. I was going to say, that's his uh, idea and interpretation of what society would want in a person. And Blaine is trying to perform what he interprets Lily would want in a guy. So all of his nature-loving, you know, bee-hugging, I'm in touch with my soul and I am an artist kind of thing is what he thinks she will care about. And he's so bad previously in their relationship that he's wrong even now with his best guess at what she will find valuable and important. Do you know what he is? Hmm. He's a caricature of Luke. That is why they seem so similar. Oh, to me, God. I just realized what he's doing. He's acting like Luke. He's trying to, he's, he's trying basically to be making an exaggerated gruff, caricature of Luke. Scruffy, kind of smells a little bad, isn't taking care of himself as well, is being artistic. Uh-huh, he's an artist because she's into the artist uh -huh. next door. Uh-huh. He is trying. And I'm good with the kid because clearly uh -huh. Luke is good with kids because he's got one. Yep. No, no. And I... I'm here to help you because Luke's clearly been over and helping. <sighs> that's disgusting. He's doing a weird parody caricature of, of Luke, assuming that's what she likes, sprinkled in with whatever he thinks she likes from previously. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, my God. And Rachel that's... was just like, I love your art. And since she's aggressively kind of shat on Luke's art, that kind of bothers me. Yeah, kind of. This was my actual husband, and his art was like, you know... Not valuable, but yours, yours, Blaine, looks like it'd be worth money. Right, except for the question then that I'm going to ask is, did he actually paint it or did he run off with something that he stole from the studio because we didn't actually try looking at it? And Lily didn't really look at it at either. all. So, eh, all good right. morning, flowers. Good morning, wheelbarrow. Hi, what do you call it again? I forgot what it was. What a beautiful morning. I should go get my easel. No, you shouldn't, actually. Good morning, Blaine. Hi. Mm. Lily Bear, good morning. Right. Uh, okay. I hope you murder him. Uh, I was just about to shove you down the basement stairs, but I didn't want to break the pretty glass. Oh, I mean, let me stop you right there. I heard you and Larry last night. You are not going to be contrite enough to stop me, and even though you are an absolute master at pushing my buttons and pushing me around and making me feel like I'm wrong, I've got empirical proof that you are not doing what you say you're doing, so you can't I... win. Yeah. And I will be assertive, because the new Lily is assertive. Don't talk, please. You ruin things when you talk, especially for me. I went to sleep angry last night. 3 a.m. Angry at you for lying about why you were here. Why was I up till 3 a.m.? Right, angsting over everything. Okay. Yeah, probably. Uh-huh. Angry at you for trying to manipulate me into ditching Regina. Also uh. really angry at you because I was staying up being moody somewhat about you and nostalgic about us in contrast to my interest in Luke now. 
angry at you for putting on this changed man act, which is clearly an, an act. act, but also really, really angry at myself for letting you do all of that. I was like, and even when I saw the red flags and I felt them in my soul, I let you continue because I am used to letting you be right. <sighs> Poor thing. Please, please listen. I wasn't lying. I'm conning Larry. I actually want to help you. He just thinks I'm helping him. Oh. Right, I don't care. I can, I, the answer is no. Yes, Larry told me about this guy who wants to buy the estate. Yes, I came here hoping to get you to sell. Ah, but it wasn't just for me. What this guy's offering Larry, it's so much money, Lily. You like money too, Lily. I know this. We could do anything, go anywhere we wanted. So it is... Where it is, it's like, it is partially about me trying to get you back, really. Okay, 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 okay. So I know we're almost friend. out of time, but I have to do this really quick. So every dating game that we've played so far um, is basically about the guy's experience. Yes. Even when it is you are the main character and it's pitched towards a girl playing the game. Like, that's your primary demographic, okay? People yeah. who were raised or assigned as women or are currently girls and women. There's this experience of the guy sort of pulls you along with his dreams, his interests, his fantasy his desires yes like the the dates are his idea the activities are his, his idea. idea the stuff that happens even when you show up in a romantic scene together and i'm looking at you here julian is is in from the arcana if you haven't seen it it's really funny i recommend it if you enjoy the shenanigans we get up to here you might really like it different yes. kind of game but you might really like it yes. anyway um that basically he's going our dreams anywhere we wanted and it happens over and over and over again in those games where they talk about it but what they're really talking about is the man's dreams his dreams the in those cases the love interest dream but he's pitching himself as the love interest and going anywhere we want it's like but it's not where we, we want. want it's where you want and he rings way too close to home to me as one of my exes who just kept trying to paint this lifestyle of these are the things we want we want a wine rack and we want to a two-car household and we want you know a, mm. a a to own you know the house and to have vacations every year and we want to have careers and this much income and we want a timeshare and i'm going i've never had dreams about any of those things mm -hmm. the only house i've ever dreamed about owning was actually one of those ridiculous storage heavy like one room cottages with a giant ass old wooden farm table mm -hmm. that is like massive cottage core and there's drawers and shelves absolutely everywhere with a tiny little loft the entire thing's probably like a thousand square feet all of it right very tiny very small maybe only like 600 square feet somewhere comfy. in there like comfy cozy friendly that's the only thing and then you have like people sleeping on couches and floors and up in the loft and on your bed and on the you know everything and that's how you have guests you don't have guest rooms you don't have a mother-in-law suite yeah you don't have any of that weird stuff not even a garage just you know, maybe like a carport so your your car doesn't get hailed on. Right. Some sort of cool trellis thing. Anyway, so I feel like that's what he's doing here. He's talking about his dreams and trying to pull her in on it in the same yes. way that he used language before to make it sound like us instead of me. Yes, absolutely. I called you a cab. It'll be out front soon. Get your stuff together. I hope you didn't quit your job over this and that you actually used some of your paid vacation to do this lie. Because otherwise, oh. you're going to have to start over, my dude completely yes all right well um but my friend yeah, screw that and also lowercase blaine we're gonna say goodbye ah! to him so thank you very much blaine. Uh, goodbye blaine. 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 blaine so thank you very much guys though for joining us if you like what we do please feel free to like comment and subscribe and please also feel free to go check out our ko-fi or patreon we've got some links in the description down below please also feel free to share our videos if you feel like uh, any of them have inspired you today yep. or at any other point um we certainly would appreciate it other than yes. that though i have been scandal and if you think anything we say is quotable or meaningful or helpful feel free to like write it down or save it or you know um capture it for yourself in some way because sometimes i have that i'll hear someone say something really cool that really speaks to me and then i'll be like what was that thing like six months later right. so i've got a hobby of collecting quotes and so if there's something that really speaks to you feel free to like take it down for yourself okay absolutely and i have been lies and, and it was great playing with you bye, bye.